today has to be my favorite makeover ever. I'm gonna show you my take on a DIY stock tank pool slash patio makeover. Last year, I just needed a little bit of a moment of breath of fresh air on my property because everything is kind of in shambles. So I did this quick makeover. I'm gonna be playing off of that makeover and using that back bench as a wraparound deck for this six foot stock tank that I'm turning into the pool. I actually was gifted this from Ben Ueda, so shout out to Homemade Modern, love you bro. Oh, that was kind of weird. Anyways, and I just wanted to kind of build the back frame up to see if it was even feasible to do a mini wraparound deck for a pool in here. I spent day one really just sitting back looking at the framing and then enjoying the view at the end of the day and kind of just tinkering the build because you know the hardest part I think of any project is the planning and the prep. The second day I cleaned out the bottom of the pool and I decided to just go back and reseal everything with that like infamous infomercial flex seal where he tapes stuff underwater and it stops leaking. So I figured why not give that a try. I used a spray paint and then I had this idea of using these hand-painted Mexican tiles that I found at a local swap meet to be the trim of the pool. Like, why not turn this into an actually cute pool? Before I installed the tile, I haven't seen many people paint the pool and it's probably for good reason, but I decided to use a metal etching primer that makes the paint that I want to use, the pool paint, adhere uh, apparently better to the metal. So that's what you see me painting here. To add an extra detail, I painter taped the trim and then used the same Flex Seal paint to just give a pop of white at the top. I think it just makes it look a little bit crispy. After that paint dried, I picked up a pool paint in just the regular schmegular paint aisle at Home Depot and decided to paint the rim blue. It just made me feel very happy instantly. So I was like, this is a good idea. But again, I'm not sure if this is going to uphold. I am trying this for the first time. Okay, I can't with the blue. The blue is so cute. No wonder every pool paint is blue. It automatically makes me feel good. But what I love the most is, stand on up, it totally matches the sky. Uh, people probably do this again for good reason, not putting stone at the bottom of a stock tank pool, but I said, let's just go for it. I should have waited to install the floor after I did the tile, little fun fact for you. I started putting down some flagstone to see what two pieces would fit. We started cutting it down and just mixing up the concrete and immediately placing it. I loved this idea though, personally. To break this stone is really easy. You just get a stone chisel and you follow the line that you want to cut multiple times and it kind of cracks naturally. A tip for you if you're doing this in a stock tank, I would have mixed self-leveling concrete with the grout and like the grout color that I'd want, poured that into the base like you see me doing here and then propped the stone on top because I had to go back in and try to grout around this crazy overmixed self-leveling that I did. Unfortunately, there was like no turning back and it just made my life way rougher. So if you are gonna do this, mix some self-leveling in the grout color that you want and then do it that way. For the trim at the top of the pool, the pink that you see is red guard. I just decided to, I couldn't put Hardy backer board, so I put red guard up anyways. I used the lip as my guide and added some thin set to the tiles and hand placed them. I wasn't care about it looking at perfect. I wanted it to look a little bit more hand placed and I didn't even measure, but it ended up being Perfect. I added some quarter round to the base of the tile and again, just kind of followed that lip as the guide. I didn't have any rhyme or reason. I liked it more hand placed. I placed it with some thin set, grouted it and let it dry. And I just, I really absolutely am obsessed with it. Having the wraparound just on the back left corner seemed to be weird for a design. So I framed out some quick stairs out of some two by sixes that I had on hand and stacked them on top of each other. And these don't necessarily need to be used. Uh, but they are like a good talking platform, you know, like a stage. I cut out some hardy backer to be the top of the steps because I wanna do full flagstone pieces for each step leading up. I think having a break in the Ipe that I'm gonna be doing would be nice and just a natural element to add. We red guarded the hardy backer because we're placing that stone and started to place the Ipe decking that's going above to wrap around and I just got very, very excited. I tested out hand chiseling the piece like I did previously for this flat part of the pool that you'll see and I kind of want to carve in wild. So I tested the first big cut on there before moving over and feeling comfortable doing the stairs. We also needed to cut some curves to go around the pool, which is a little bit intimidating, but getting a masonry bit on my angle grinder and just taking it a little bit by little bit ended up feeling like I was cutting through butter and I can cut a perfect curve. It was really, really awesome and empowering to be honest. Oh. Dead by the steps. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. 
Once Allie and I got in the groove, like we did it a couple times and felt way more comfortable and confident, we kind of busted through that thing, to be honest. And we started placing the steps in place by labeling them so we knew which one went where. And once those were all solid, we added some thin set and really secured them on into the Hardy Backer board. When we started placing these steps, I got a little emotional, to be honest, because it's just cool to finally, finally, oh my God, do a design at my house and a renovation that's staying. It's not like a temporary makeover for me to live to eventually run innovate into the house of my dreams. And so while we were placing this, I was tripping out because it is so, so permanent. Like if I needed to change anything, I was like, oh boy, Rachel, you're making it real hard for yourself. To seal up the edges to the pool, I decided to use some spray foam just to add a little bit of backing and then the grout that matched the bottom of the pool that we just did, which is called Haystack. Can we talk about, this is future Rachel, can we talk about how I just sealed the deck that you have yet to see finished and there's a huge flash flood warning and it's raining the most crazy it ever has. <laughs> Anywho, this is exactly why I love HelloFresh. I can't leave my house, there's a flash flood warning and I legit don't even want to think about dinner. And voila, deliver right to my door, three meals, so let's go. Skip the grocery store and soak up the rest of this summer sun, why don't you? HelloFresh is honestly your one-stop shop for all your mealtime needs, from quick snacks to breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even desserts. No, you're not following me into the shower, but what I love is that I can shower without having to think about planning a meal for myself because I can just go on the app and choose from their variety of different menu options every single week exactly what I want, including a veggie option, or if you love meat, you can literally customize it week by week. HelloFresh recipes include pre-portioned ingredients. That means less prep for you and less wasted food. It also cuts down on your food waste by at least 25% compared to your grocery shopping. And because this lifestyle is so unpredictable over here in the desert and what I do, quite frankly, um, it's really nice to be able to pause the subscription if you need to and just adjust accordingly week by week because, you know, life happens. If you guys are interested in checking out HelloFresh, you can actually head over to HelloFresh.com and use code MET16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Again, you can head to HelloFresh.com and use the code MET16. Use my code MET16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. Let's jump right back into this makeover. Oh, it's now time to focus on that wraparound deck that my friends actually gifted me some teak decking. Thank you so much, Advantage Lumber. And we're going to be just prepping for that with some duct tape. And while Allie was doing that with the deck, D-E-C-K, it's specific tape. I linked it down below for you. I went ahead and started grouting the tiles to give it a more finished look. Uh, let's not talk about that framing job. I honestly don't even want to go over it. It kicked my butt for some reason because you have to consider the slats on the deck that you're doing and I'm just not familiar with framing so I definitely did it wrong my apologies we cut the teak down to size and when you cut the teak you need to use this like ipe sealing oil which we put directly on the end grain and started placing them into place and securing them one by one with these deck clips I'm doing like a full in-depth deck for you guys this was just a tester for me so I'm like kind of breezing through the instructions. You do want to make sure that you're using a subfloor adhesive to prevent squeaking and just movement in general, sliding and gliding. We do not want that. I continued wrapping the top of the deck and then Allie and I moved down to the stairs and cut little short pieces to run vertically just again to add some difference, some texture. I love the Pinterest photos of the little stock tank pool with the curved deck going around the rim and that's what I attempted here and by no means did I do it perfect but I am happy I gave it a go because I do like seeing the curve in the teak and going around the little stock tank pool. To carry over the vertical of the stairs, I'm doing that on the right hand wall that is exposed because obviously the left hand is taken up by the pool. That whole thing needs to fit in here and I'm hoping it fits. I decided to get crazy and add a sand filter to the sucker because we're going to get a cover and like, let's make our lives easy. So I linked it down below for you. That corner space is so I have access to the toggle from the top or the side access door, which I'll show you in a later makeover. And you need to drill two holes, one a little bit higher, which is like an input where the water that's filtered is shooting in and the lower one's going to be for the filter that's sucking the things that need to come out, out, obviously. Anything that was attaching to the pool, I silicone just to be extra, extra cautious. So the input, we just silicone, put it on in there, screwed it in. The filter, silicone, put it on in there, screwed it in. 
Oh my gosh, with the decking in place, my mind was just blown. You went in with some eBay oil and sealed that sucker up again. All of it's through Advantage Lumber. And so I'll link every single thing that I'm using down below that I can for you guys, because this is just hands down one of my favorite projects. <laughs> now we are detailing out. So I opted to use a masonry bit and a Dremel and start to carve into a tile, stay wild. You can't really see it unless you're up close and personal. Another detail that we definitely need are misters. So your girl installed misters on the right hand side of the space because the wind has a tendency to kind of blow the water to the left. And so that's exactly what I did. Know your environment, people. To close that gap between the decking, I added a three quarter square dowel of just the darkest wood that Home Depot had available and added that Ipe oil to it. And I decided to give the flooring a fresh coat of patio like garage white paint. I really am considering tiling or doing something different here. So I'm not just painting on top of this subfloor essentially, but that's for future Rachel to handle. Remember how I have to have corner access to the filter? Well, I decided to cut down a piece of Hardy Backer and red guard it, thin set it, put that hand painted tile right on top of it with Miss Allie and have a DIY session. Cut it with a masonry bit on my angle grinder like you saw me do with the flagstone and use that to be the cover up in that corner. The most nerve wracking part really is filling this pool up because it's such a permanent build and I didn't uh, think I needed to up the level of my filter so that corner was actually built for a smaller filter. So it's leaking over there, not too bad but bad enough. We gotta turn on this system, I'm gonna turn this to filter, FP, yep, and then we press what do we do, filter. <gasps> Uh, I changed the size later. So I just laugh because anything that's gonna leak right now, it's gonna be very difficult to fix. I am just besides myself with this space. There are a couple more makeovers coming after this, but the garden really inspired it. And to finally have a space that I'm designing again, like not to renovate or temporarily, like this is a permanent thing on this property. I love this. I love it. And then look, you just go. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. You guys, I officially created paradise. I literally could cry, it's done. What I really love the most about this space is truly I designed it with me and my three best friends in mind. Like where we sit, how we talk, how we move, how we groove, like it's in great proximity to the hot tub. And now we have a little cold tub over here. It's just exciting to be able to finally execute all the thoughts in my brain. And I'm just like blown away that a thought became a reality. This is, it's just insane. We will be playing off of this space for a little bit. We have a couple things to do to fine tune it to kind of move on to the next big thing. Cause fun fact, the trailer, when it rained, the whole, <laughs> ceiling, basically the middle of the ceiling sunk in. So we need to kind of restart over there, but I will see you very soon for another makeover in DIY.